sometimes things can seem like they're wonderful and you think, wow, that's somebody whose life maybe is great. But what you don't know about me, 13 years ago, something happened to me that I was really ashamed to talk about. I was arrested, charged with felony sex fraud, and thrown in jail. So you look at me and you say, wow, you don't look like somebody who would be arrested for felony check fraud. And I will tell you, nobody was more surprised than me. <laughs> now, okay, I wrote the check. I did write the check for $2,909.11. The check that forever changed my life. But what I didn't know at the time was my husband was withdrawing money out of our business checking account. So I found out one day, it was a Friday the 13th in June. Yes, Friday the 13th. 1996, and it started with a knock on my apartment door. And you know, I had a nine-year-old daughter home at the time, and everything was a little chaotic. What we were doing is our laundry. She was actually sitting on the couch watching Harry and his spy. And I looked up at people and I saw a sheriff's deputy. Now, I didn't know what a sheriff deputy could want with me. So I opened the door and he asked me my name and he said these words, you're under arrest for felony check fraud. Now, I didn't really know what to do. I tried to explain, my husband took the money out of the account, I didn't know what had happened. But like any good law professional, he had a job to do, and his job was to take me off to jail. Now you can imagine, I mean, again, I don't really look like a jailbird, right? <laughs> and the people in jail are a little different than my typical people I hang out with. Uh, and, you know, the one thing that I would say is there were many people who were living on the margins of society. And I started off with maximum security, which I guess all prisoners probably did. Started off with maximum security. And I remember I had a, a bed, a bed with a metal frame, a thin foam mattress, and a toilet without a seat. Yeah. yeah. I was locked in my cell for 16 hours a day and got out you know, for meals and a little bit of exercise from time to time. And this is a tip for any of you if you ever end up getting arrested, even if it's not your fault. One thing to pay attention to is if you're playing games inside the jail, don't argue with the other inmates. You know, when you're playing volleyball and they say it's out and you know it's in, just let it be out. <laughs> that was one thing I learned. So, so I spent days in jail and eventually I was released on my own recognizance. And all of the mix-up was put to rest and the charges were dismissed. But needless to say, I kind of had some issues with my husband <laughs> after that. So we didn't stay married. Who here has been through divorce? Okay, I have to. Who's heard of anyone who's had a divorce? <laughs> okay, everybody, everybody is one or knows, knows one who is divorced. So after that, after getting a divorce, sometimes it takes a couple of years before you feel like getting on the dating track. And so, you know, when I find it, you have to keep in mind, I was a romance fantasist from way back. So back in, I guess, the early 1980s, my passion was reading romance novels. And who wouldn't be attracted to this kind of guy? I mean, this is the master of desire. And it says on here you might not be able to read. Perfect match of passion and pageantry. Now, this is the kind of guy that I was hoping to find. Or maybe somebody more like <laughs> the master of desire. A perfect, he, he's also, um, he's actually the perfect match of passion and pageantry. But best of all, the bewitched Viking. <laughs> so these were the men that I was looking for when I was first starting to date. And as you know, I mean, Prince Charming. Isn't really out there, right? Has anybody found Prince Charming? Or Princess Charming? Okay, one. Yeah. 
together. And basically, I would hear all of these breakup lines. Maybe some of you have heard a breakup line. Maybe some of you have given a breakup line. <laughs> and mostly, I was getting dumped. So I was dumped seven times in seven years. And I hear such things as, it's not you, it's me. We all hear that, right? That was maybe breakup line number one. And you know, keep in mind that maybe the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, all sorts of different men from all walks of life, and they all have these breakup lines for me. Or how about this? I don't feel the magic. Well, for this one, I said, what do you expect? I'm a woman, not a magician. Or how about this one? <laughs> I'm married, but you never ask. Don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> Here you're planning your future, but you really didn't plan your future with multiple wives. <laughs> but the final thing that I realized when, uh, through all this dating experience is that I was really on a dating merry-go-round. I was going in circles and getting nowhere and time and time again falling off my plastic pony. And I realized I needed to do something different. So I actually started cycling during this time. I bought a bike. I always loved cycling from the time I was young. And I tootled around my neighborhood. Eventually, I signed up for an indoor wind training class, which is an extensively dramatic type of exercise where you feel like you're going to faint. Seriously, it's very hard. Well, again, I wasn't looking to date. <coughs> But what do you do, you know, when a handsome man who's a cyclist and fit comes up to you, sits next to your bike, you just can't resist. And let me tell you, good-looking, attractive, athletic men aren't on every street corner in Montana. <laughs> no, yeah, there's more here in Chicago, right? So we dated for a while, and what I found out was he started getting a little more distance. And I would call him, and he wouldn't return my calls as much, and finally I just asked him what the problem was. And he called me back on the phone to tell me this. <laughs> <laughs> you bug me. I can't help it, but you bug me. I said, I love you? He said, yes, you love me. I don't know what it is about you, but I just can't see myself in a relationship with you. So. This was really the turning point for me. Somebody telling me I bug him. So I got up the next day. I took my dogs for a walk early in the morning, and Montana has some snow, like I'm sure it snows here every once in a while in Chicago. <laughs> so I went out into the dark with one of those little headlamps and my yak tracks on, walking, walking my dogs. And I just thought to myself, what do I want to do with my life? This was the second breakup in seven years. I knew I needed to do something different. Maybe I needed to move, change my career. I wasn't sure what it was. And then a different question formed in my head. And that question was, what would make you happy? And I smiled as I realized, I want to go to France. Any of you have lifelong dreams? Maybe travel is one of them. Some of you love to travel. Maybe you have other dreams. Aspiration to write a book. Maybe become a professional speaker. I heard a lot of that yesterday. Well, I have always had a dream to visit France. And life had gotten in the way. Single parent. Raising a daughter, it seemed very frivolous, very impractical. But I decided that it was really time to put aside all my worries and just go to France. So I took my bike, packed it up, signed up for a cycling tour, and the next thing you know, I'm pedaling from Bordeaux all the way to the Alps. And of course, drinking a little bit of wine along the way. Who's my wine friends last night? Yay. I rode my bike, this is Mount Montu, which is one of the toughest climbs in the world, and I will tell you I rode it after a hangover. <laughs> and what I discovered in France is that the beauty that surrounded me was renewing my soul. And it wasn't just 
the scenes. It was also the history of the place and the people I was meeting along the way. From an old man looking over a balcony to an old woman who was wondering why I was taking her picture <laughs> to the bartender in Bordeaux who was trying to teach me French lessons. But what I discovered along the way through this journey of dating, cycling, going to France, drinking a lot of wine, is that I had been in the search for Mr. Right. And what I needed to do for myself was create the right life. France was a beautiful country, it is a beautiful country. Montana is beautiful as well. Illinois is a beautiful place. Well, Toastmasters, I see the yellow lights on, so 
so I'm going to wrap up now. My book, Cycling Wine Men, is available if you're interested. And also, I do have another package for you with this book. I am going to give you, you can remember those breakup lines? Actually, I have 101 best breakup lines. <laughs>